Hi folks, it's Perry again. Uh, long time no see. So as you can see, I'm standing in front of a red house. This is my new red house. And uh, as part of building the new house, I had to relocate a bunch of utilities. Now, uh, when I say a bunch, I mean every single utility. And one of the utilities I had to relocate was all of the wiring that went to the barn for the irrigation pump. So today I'm going to show you how to make waterproof connections, at least the way I make waterproof connections, using, using uh, off-the-shelf tools and uh, materials that are made for that purpose. So what we have today is a junction. Uh, let me explain a little bit of the history of this junction. So the line at the 12 o'clock is the incoming power uh, that's coming from my main electrical service as a branch circuit. This, at 9 o'clock, is the power that goes to the irrigation pump. And then at 6 o'clock here is the uh, conduit that goes to the barn. Now you may be asking yourself, uh, why is it uh, doing it that way? Or why did they do it that way? And the answer is actually quite simple. Uh, it seems that they installed the irrigation pump before they built the barn, and so when they built the barn, uh, they simply installed a junction box at the corner of the house that was similar to this one, and then ran a two-inch conduit uh, out to the barn. And what they do is, or what they did was, uh, run four gauge into the barn and four gauge out of the barn using the same conductor or same conduit. So what I have to do is terminate all of this mess of wires in a waterproof way. And you might ask, well. Why do I have to make it waterproof? And the simple answer is, just because it's in a plastic container with gaskets and it's glued together, doesn't mean it's actually waterproof. Uh, so all connections that go underground, at least in my opinion, if they're in conduit, they should at least be uh, terminated in such a way that if the conduit gets flooded, you're not going to have live electrical current uh, reach ground or uh, the water around it. So. Let me show you uh, what they used before. So this is what they construed as a waterproof termination. Now, inside of here are little uh, junction blocks. It's got two screws, metal block, and they just wrapped it in electrical tape. And the problem is, as you can see, that's not wrapped very tightly. Now this is just the ground, but I can promise you the other conductors weren't much better. So this is not what I would consider waterproof. And when I opened this box originally, they had just used uh, threaded conduit fasteners and they didn't glue it, didn't use box adapters or anything like that. So it was wet inside there. I'm doing this all waterproof. So let me show you what I'm going to use. First of all, simplest approach is sometimes the best approach. These as you can see, are large waterproof connectors. These are basically uh, wire nuts, but they're waterproof. As you can see, there's a little rubber gasket, but inside of them is a dielectric silicone grease. And these, there's a, a little bit of a, a packaging issue. As you can see, it says 14 to 16 AUG, but when you look at the actual uh, chart, it doesn't actually show 6 AUG on there. So I'm just going to go with the assumption that I can put two 6 gauge wires in one of these. Now, my ground wires are 6 gauge, but my current carrying conductors are 4 gauge. So for that purpose, we are going to use these. Dual rated splicer reducer. Uh, this can take up to a 2 gauge wire. Then, I've got heat shrink to go over them, and to go inside, and to go inside the heat shrink, I've got dielectric grease. So I'm going to squirt this inside there once I've shrunk one side of the heat shrink, and this will keep everything uh, electrically insulated if anything, any water gets inside there, the grease will provide a barrier to the water. Our first step is to 
cut our wires to length. We have those stripped to the right length. Now let's open our package of waterproof connectors. And strip wires, align any frayed strands. Pre-twisting unnecessary. Place them together. Twist wires. Twist connector on the wire. Wipe, wipe sealant around conductors. Conduct opening while tightening. Do not reuse. Okay. So we just need to put them parallel. Stuff them in here. And then again tighten. With wire nuts, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. When you think that you've got them tight enough, keep turning until you really can't turn them anymore. So, let's tuck that ground. Now, I don't need to wipe any of the sealant because it was well and truly oozing out. So, let me show you what I'm going to use to trace these wires. This is a tracer. Uh, it's very commonly used for tracing telephone wires and whatnot, but it has these two alligator clamps on it so you can trace bare conductors. So I'm going to go hook this up to the service in the barn where the main shutoff is for the uh, irrigation pump and then we'll come back and tone out the wires. Okay, so I didn't really explain how that tracer works. Uh, so the tracer basically just has a little noise maker in it. It generates a tone that warbles. And this is what you call an inductive pickup. It's a little speaker, and if I touch my finger to it, just me touching my finger to the, to the tip right there will cause it to make a scratchy noise. Now what this will do is it allows me to pick up electric currents uh, you know, induced noise, electric currents, etc. Anything that's not straight DC uh, in the wires. So, if I... So, this is one of the L1 or L2. That's uh, L1 or L2. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah, we were getting low readings on these because, as I said, it induced current. So these are running in the same pipe and the warble that is induced on these will actually transfer to these because they're running right next to each other. So that's low. See, it's very weak in that one. It's weak in that one. Louder in that one. Louder in that one. So these two, these are L1 and L2. These are the lines that we need to connect to the main service uh, branch circuit, and then these are the ones that I need to connect to these. So what we'll do is we'll work on the branch circuit first. Let me try to get these out of the way. Okay, we're back. You'll have to tolerate a little bit of fan noise in the background because I got my cordless fan here blowing on me to help keep me from sweating everywhere. So we've got these little blocks and four lengths of heat shrink, which what we'll do is we'll just drop those down over here. And we're going to install the blocks on the incoming side of the branch circuit. Okay, back with the bigger screwdriver. Okay, let's try to 
find center on this one. We shrunk that down. Now we're going to pump a little bit of dielectric grease into the sleeve. Wondering how much, just a, a decent amount on all four sides of that uh, metal block, because once we heat shrink this down, it's going to ooze out the end anyway. We just want to make sure that any of the space that's left in there is going to be taken up by dielectric grease, so that if water does get in there, if water gets into this box, the dielectric grease will displace any air and prevent water from leaking into the joints. Okay, so that, that joint right there, it's puffy because there's dielectric grease inside there. Might have put just a smidge on the uh, high side worth of grease. You know, let's put a little bit less in the next ones. So I'm going to let those cool off, and then we'll terminate the other two connections. And then we'll play uh, electrical box origami and uh, fit all of these in there with a little bit of twisting and cajoling. Let's do a little recap here. So, I did the terminations on the second set of wires, same as the first. I put a little less dielectric in these, uh, which seems to have been uh, the right choice. It's a little puffy because there's dielectric in there, but you can see that it squeezed out the little PVC inside without. Uh, puffing out a bunch of dielectric. So let me uh, recap the products I used here. This is the heat shrink. It's a 7 8 inch heavy wall shrink tube and it has that little PVC um, liner. It says adhesive line for waterproof seal. This is available at Home Depot. Uh, I just cut these in half. Here are the splices I used. These are also available at Home Depot. Dual rated splicer reducer. They are aluminum with a tin plating, so not the highest quality, but it's what you can get. And these are good for a 14 gauge to two gauge. This is the dielectric grease that I bought. This is CRC technician grade dielectric grease and this can is pressurized so when you pull that it's like cheese whiz it's dielectric grease cheese whiz and for the grounds I used this large waterproof connectors 
also available at Home Depot in smaller packs than this. I thought I was going to be using them for all of this, but it turned out that the wire gauge was too big. So these are good for 14 to 6 gauge. You can do 2 at 6 gauge and, what does it say, for 14 you can do two tens with one to three fourteens, three tens with one fourteen, I don't know. You can do a lot. Well, that's the recap. How to make waterproof connections for high voltage lines. Yes, this is high voltage because it's over 50 volts. Thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with the weird focus. And uh, have a good day.